Welcome, we're standing at a pivotal moment not just for a single nation but for an entire region. Today, September 1, 2025, the Philippines faces a decision that will define its sovereignty for generations. It's a choice that goes far beyond military hardware, national pride, economic strategy, the very security of its people. The question is simple, yet the answer is profoundly complex. Which multi-role fighter jet will become the new guardian of the Philippine skies? At stake is the future of the Philippine Air Force and its ability to defend its territory, particularly in the contested waters of the West Philippine Sea. This isn't just a procurement deal, it's a statement to the world. The choice has been narrowed down to two formidable aircraft. In one corner, the American-made Lockheed Martin F-16 Fighting Falcon. In the other corner, Sweden's Saab JS-39 Gripen. The gathering storm in the West Philippine Sea. To grasp the urgency of this decision, we must turn our eyes to the waters west of the archipelago. The West Philippine Sea, part of the larger South China Sea, has become one of the world's most critical geopolitical flashpoints. For the Philippines, it is not an abstract concept, it is a matter of sovereign territory and economic survival. The area is rich in fish stocks that feed millions. It is believed to hold vast untapped reserves of oil and natural gas, yet Filipino fishermen are routinely harassed, survey ships are blocked. The nation's claim to these waters, upheld by a 2016 International Tribunal ruling at The Hague, is consistently challenged. This is where the need for a credible air defense becomes starkly clear. The Philippine Air Force currently relies on a squadron of 12 F-A-50 PH Fighting Eagle Jets. They are lead-in fighter trainers with a secondary light combat capability. They are a significant step up from the retired F-5S of a bygone era. But they are not a match for advanced fourth-generation fighters, nor for advanced fifth-generation fighters. Without a capable multi-role fighter, the Philippines cannot effectively patrol its own exclusive economic zone, or EEZ. The Philippine Air Force has done its homework. A technical working group meticulously evaluated the options, whittling down a list of potential aircraft to two final contenders. This wasn't a decision made lightly, it involved years of study, visits to manufacturing plants and detailed simulations. The goal was to find an aircraft that met the demanding technical requirements for air-to-air -air missions and air-to-ground missions, while fitting the Philippines' budgetary constraints. The two jets that emerged represent two different philosophies of air power, each with a compelling case for the defense of the archipelago, side-by-side -side silhouettes of the F-16 and Gripen with USA and Sweden flags. On one side stands the Lockheed Martin F-16 Fighting Falcon, specifically the latest Block 70-72 variant, the Viper, a modern descendant of a legendary design. With over 4,600 units produced, the F-16 is one of the most successful and widely operated fighters in history. On the other side is the Saab Jazz 39 Gripen, with the latest CD variant, or the more advanced EF variant. The F-16V Viper is the pinnacle of the F-16 lineage. While the airframe has been around for decades, the V variant is packed with 21st century technology. Its centerpiece is the Northrop Grumman AN APG-83 Scalable Agile Beam Radar, the SABR an active electronically scanned array radar. This gives the pilot unprecedented situational awareness, allowing the jet to track and engage multiple targets with speed and precision. The radar tech traces back to systems in the F-22 Raptor and the F-35 Lightning II. For the Philippine Air Force, that's a quantum leap in sensors. The Viper package also includes a modernized cockpit. With a high-resolution center pedestal display, a new mission computer and a high-capacity data bus, those upgrades enable integration of advanced weapons like the AIM-120 AMRAM and a wide array of precision-guided munitions for ground attack. The F-16's strength is maturity and interoperability, 25 nations fly it, so the Philippines would join a huge user base gaining shared training, knowledge, and a global logistics network. But there are drawbacks. It's more demanding on maintenance and operational costs than its Swedish rival. It needs pristine runways and significant ground support infrastructure, the engine, from General Electric or Pratt & Whitney, gives immense thrust but guzzles fuel. The Saab JAS-39 Gripen presents a starkly different but equally compelling proposition. Designed with Sweden in mind, defending a large territory with a limited budget, against a superior foe, it's a masterpiece of efficiency, its key selling point is remarkably low operational cost. 
Saab says it's the lowest cost per flight hour among modern Western fighters. Figures often place Gripen C and D at $5,000 to $8,000 per hour, which is a fraction of the F-16S. That's a powerful argument for the budget-conscious Philippine Department of National Defense. The Gripen's design emphasizes affordability and operational flexibility. It can take off and land on short, 800-meter runways. It can even operate from sections of public highways. That dispersed operations capability is highly relevant for the Philippines, over 7,000 islands. Operating away from large, vulnerable airbases is a massive tactical advantage. It can be refueled, rearmed, and serviced by a small team of conscript-level technicians in minutes, ensuring a high sortie generation rate. The Gripen C and D offered are advanced 4.5-generation fighters. They feature a modern glass cockpit, a powerful PS-05A pulse Doppler radar, and the ability to carry a wide range of munitions, including the Meteor long-range missile. The Gripen's sophisticated data link lets a group of jets share sensor data seamlessly. The newer Gripen E adds an AESA radar and revolutionary electronic warfare suite. When it comes to multi-billion dollar defense contracts, the sticker price is only the beginning. The total cost of ownership matters. Fuel, spare parts, personnel training, technicians working on aircraft avionics, workshop upgrading jet systems, mid-life upgrades. This is where the F-16 versus Gripen becomes upfront investment versus long-term sustainability. Lockheed Martin and Saab presented packages, and their differences are telling. Philippine budget for the MRF, 61 billion Philippine pesos, roughly $1.1 billion. U.S. offer, 12 F-16 Block 7070 Seconds Vipers, estimated $2.43 billion. That includes jets, a substantial weapons package, training, and initial support. The price was above the Philippines' budget. Former Defense Secretary Delfin Lorenzana called it too expensive. A 2021 U.S. GAO report estimated operating costs at over $26,000 per flight hour, a major budget consideration. Saab's Gripen CD was reportedly priced to fit the 61 billion peso budget, immediately more attractive from an acquisition standpoint. In the world of modern defense procurement, a country is not just buying a piece of hardware, it is buying a long-term strategic and industrial partnership. This is where the concept of offsets comes into play. Offsets are industrial compensation packages that the seller agrees to provide to the buyer's country, designed to offset the cost of the purchase by stimulating the local economy. They can include direct investments, technology transfers, licensed production, creating local jobs. For a developing nation like the Philippines, the quality of the offset package is often as important as the capability of the jet itself. The Swedish offer from Saab is famously built around a very aggressive and attractive offset program. Saab has a track record of offering 100% industrial return on its contracts. We can look to Brazil as a key example. When Brazil purchased 36 Gripen EF fighters, the deal included a massive technology transfer program. Saab has indicated a similar willingness to invest in the Philippines, promising to transfer knowledge and help build a domestic aerospace and defense industry, a prospect that aligns perfectly with the country's economic development goals. The American approach, typically conducted through the foreign military sales program, is different. The FMS process, is a government-to-government -government transaction that prioritizes transparency, security, and interoperability over direct industrial offsets. The benefit is not in direct investment but in integration into the massive U.S. defense industrial ecosystem, proven upgrade paths, and vast supply chains. This presents a clear choice in priorities for Manila. Does it prioritize building its own indigenous defense industry from the ground up, or strengthening its strategic alliance with the United States? In matters of national security time is a resource that cannot be recovered. The urgency in the West Philippine Sea makes delivery schedules critical. The Philippine Air Force needs jets fast to train pilots, develop doctrine, and establish a credible deterrent. Both Lockheed Martin and Saab have production lines running. Lockheed Martin's F-16 production line in Greenville is currently ramping up for a surge in demand. That creates a production backlog. Bahrain, Slovakia, Bulgaria, Taiwan. The United States can prioritize allies, but the Philippines would still wait its turn in a queue. Typical FMS timeline suggests three to four years minimum from contract signing to first delivery. Saab, on the other hand, says the Gripen CD could deliver first jets within 24 months. 
The Gripen CD is a mature production line. Saab's direct commercial sales approach allows more flexibility and can expedite delivery. That speed could be a decisive advantage, allowing the Philippine Air Force to reach initial operational capability sooner. If the immediate threat perception is high, a faster delivery could tip the scales in the Gripen's favor. This timeline isn't just about the first jet's arrival, it's about the full squadron of 12 aircraft. A staggered delivery over many years can delay achievement of full operational capability. The ideal scenario is a compressed delivery schedule that lets the Air Force stand up its new squadron quickly. The Philippine Department of National Defense must weigh the F-16's longer wait against the Gripen's faster promise. We have journeyed through the intricate details of a decision that will echo for decades. The choices between the F-16 Viper and the JS-39 Gripen. It is not merely a technical one. It is a profound strategic and economic deliberation. The F-16 offers the immense power of a proven platform, backed by the world's strongest military alliance. The Gripen offers a vision of modern, efficient, and independent air power. It promises a technologically advanced fighter at a fraction of the operational cost. Its rapid delivery timeline addresses immediate security concerns in the West Philippine Sea. Critically, the Swedish offer comes with the promise of genuine technology transfer and industrial development. A chance for the Philippines to not just buy a fighter, but to build a future for its own aerospace industry. The final decision, expected any day now, will be made by the leaders in Manila. It will be a reflection of their vision for the nation. There is no single right answer. Both aircraft are exceptionally capable. The choice will come down to a fundamental judgment of priorities, cost versus capability, speed versus alliance, industrial ambition versus strategic integration. This story is far from over. The selection of the jet is only the first chapter. The real work will begin when the contracts are signed and the first pilots begin their training. Now we want to shift the focus to you. Instead of just asking you to like or subscribe, we invite you to become part of the analysis. In the comments, don't just state your preferred jet. Build your case. Which factors, cost, alliance, or technology, do you believe should be the absolute priority for the Philippines, and why?